If there is one thing that indie developers are known for, it is combining the gameplay and mechanics of numerous genres together to create a completely different experience to what you would normally get. Sometimes it works and sometimes it is a recipe for disaster, and the game that we are looking at today is a perfect example of a concept that was never going to work from the beginning. Beasts Battle 2 is a turn-based strategy game developed and published by indie developer Greenolore Studios. It released on February 1st, 2018 and is the sequel to their previous game, Beasts Battle. Beasts Battle 2 has a wonderful art design and unique and quirky characters but ultimately contains a somewhat cliché plot and a gameplay that simply isn't engaging and doesn't contain enough to keep you playing. The plot to Beasts Battle 2 puts you in the role of a nameless princess who finds that the village she is in is completely devoid of life, except some tiger people. Along with your new tiger companions, you find that the townsfolk have been killed and reanimated as skeletons, the work of no other than a necromancer. Your objective is to build an army, find and destroy this necromancer before he can corrupt and control the entire world. And that is pretty much it. The plot isn't all that interesting and quite cliche, it is simply find and kill the bad guy. Indeed the characters you meet along the way each have their own unique personalities and quirkiness, but they can't hold the game's plot on their own, not to mention there is little world building throughout. It leaves the player with having not much of a reason to progress, the plot isn't interesting enough and with no world building there isn't anything else to intrigue the player and having them want to continue to play and learn more. And the way that this game is designed, it needs a well crafted and unique plot and world, but it just doesn't have it. As for the gameplay, it consists of two core elements, moving through the world map and combat. The world map works in a similar fashion to games that you find on the likes of armor games, Newground and mobile devices. You move to the next spot on the map and it starts up an event of some kind, be it plot progression, obtaining an item, recruiting new units, meeting a new character, or starting combat. Pretty run of the mills exploration that doesn't excite nor do anything new. As for the combat it is pretty much an exact copy of how it works in Heroes of Might and Magic. You can have up to 5 units on the field where their strength is determined by their numbers. The more of each unit you have the more damage they dish out. The same applies to the enemies. To help you along your way you can cast spells at the cost of mana. Some spells damage a target enemy or a number of enemies within a blast radius. Others buff your units in some way like haste or vampirism. You gain new spells either through learning new skills through the skill tree or by learning them as you level up, which is done by winning battles. While leveling up you also gain boosts to your damage and leadership, which allows you to hire more of a unit. There are also items that you find along the way which too help improve your unit's damage and defence. Each of the units are unique in how they attack, some can attack numerous enemies at once or two enemies in a straight line. Each of the units can also be upgraded once, increasing their damage, defense and gaining a special ability of some kind. When you win a battle you gain experience and money, depending on your losses in the battle, a certain amount of your gold will be deducted from your winnings to heal your units. I'm going to give credit where it is due, the developer is clearly a massive fan of the Heroes of Might and Magic style combat and knows its ins and outs flawlessly, and that shows in the combat of the game, but sadly that is where my praise ends. What the developer hasn't realised is that the Heroes of Might and Magic combat was never designed to be able to stand on its own. What makes those games so brilliant is all the strategic elements that take place outside of the combat, such as the exploration, town building, resource management and so on. And Beasts Battle 2 has none of that, and without it, the combat is just boring, monotonous and lacking in every regard, as there is nothing outside of it that changes up the game to make it exciting. There's no punishment for losing, you simply just have to try again and grind in an endless arena until you level up or gain enough gold to upgrade units for the next battle to be easier. Having that style of gameplay is fine for free to play flash games or even mobile games, but it isn't suitable for those wanting to sit down and have a good gaming session like what PC gaming is played for. Which leads me to the question of, if that is the case, why is there even difficulty options? All they do is make the grind ever worse. Simply put, Beasts Battle 2 is only a strategy game by style, as with strategy games you need to be tactical and there needs to be a win or lose situation, and here there isn't. So how can it even be called a strategy game? I've played through Beasts Battle 2 to the final chapter and throughout the entire experience I felt nothing but numbness. I felt no excitement, no fulfilment, and most of all, I felt that my time had not been well spent. It is a game that's design belongs on mobile device or flash game websites, where you play for 10 or 15 minutes here and there to pass the time, but as a PC game to sit down and play for several hours, its gameplay just doesn't work. I've been very fortunate with titles so far this year, 
or all of them have won me over in some form or another. And when you come across one having an identity crisis like this, it can really sour the mood. At the end of the day, it isn't a terrible game, it just isn't designed to suit the platform it's released on. It does have some wonderful art design and I enjoy the dialogue of the colourful characters that you come across in your adventures. But aside from that, there is little else I can say is genuinely positive. As a mobile or flash game, I would certainly give the game an easier time, but for mainstream gaming, it just doesn't meet the standards. It doesn't have the plot, it doesn't have the world building or the gameplay to make it interesting or grip you for a proper gaming session, and it just leaves you feeling bored and wanting to do nothing more than press the exit button. And with that, I give Beasts Battle 2 a 4 out of 10. If you're looking for something to play while eating your lunch at your desk or to pass the time when you have literally nothing else to do or play, then Beasts Battle 2 may be worth a try. But aside from that, it's best to keep that 10 bucks for a game that will at least give you some sort of enjoyment.